Jalen Brunson's been roasted all season on national TV. Firstly, by Becky Hammond, who called him too small to be a top player. As a person that used to get some buckets, <laughs> I'm saying this as a small person. This is this is a this is a game that the big and bold and t it favors that uh, uh, God-given thing. Not, uh Secondly, by Candace Parker, saying Brunson wasn't great in his second round where he averaged 31, six and six. But as a number one option last year in the playoffs, great first round, second round, not so much. So I, I'm in agreement with her. New Yorker Stephen A. Smith also stated Brunson can't be a championship number one option. Additionally, admitting he didn't vote Brunson into the All-Star game starting five. But I'm sorry, this kid, Halliburton, there's a reason the fans, the media, and the players all voted for Halliburton over Brunson. Prompting the likes of Kendrick Perkins to put him in his place. You stay right there, you fix your body. I, I voted for Jalen Brunson. You know what the problem is? You are a prime example, along with the organization, of not promoting this man of what he is. In addition to the criticism from Hammond, Parker, and Smith, even though Brunson's ahead of Damian Lillard in 8 out of 12 major stat categories, all-star fan voting left Jalen out of the starting five. There's been even more disrespect than what I mentioned toward Brunson and the Knicks collectively, so stick around to find out the culprit, how Brunson burners responded to getting flamed, and with Randall's shoulder dislocation, who needs to step up? Right quick, just 11.3% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds, it makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DFlowHoops and I'll follow you back. Links down below in the description for those two platforms. Despite New York having the best record in the new year, plus four of the top six players in league-wide plus minus on their roster in the year 2024, the January 22nd version of NBA.com's power rankings have them ranked as just the 12th best team. Injury update on Randall is on its way, but it's important that basketball experts start specifically evaluating New York based off the team they've been for now 17% of the season since trading for 2023 Steels champion and all-defensive second-team forward OG Ananobi. 12-2 since the blockbuster, Knicks president Leon Rose found the definitive perfect fit next to first and second options Jalen Brunson and Julius Randall against a team that owns the 8th greatest offensive rating in the 77-year history of the NBA, Ananobi's defensive clinic stole the show. In addition to setting a season high and career second most in single game steals with 6 of them, OG had a league wide for Thursday third most 5 deflections, and as a primary defender, held his match up to just 1 for 8 shooting from the field. Along with what he's done on defense, Ananobi's been a suitable swingman that's ideally complemented Brunson and Randall on the other side, whether that comes in the form of hitting a spot up three, attacking swiftly on the catch, Ananobi penetrates and flushes it, or feasting in transition, OG was all around the final Liberty City puzzle piece. Making a case for DPOY, Ananobi's screen navigation slash pick and roll defending wherewithal, disruptive muscle to hold off matchups down low, step ahead of the offense cognizance, perceptive positioning, deceptive backside rotations, 7-2 wingspan, and timing all contribute to making him the best all-around defender in the NBA. Proving OG's a historically great defender, before the New York win over Miami, Ananobi became the first player in league history with at least a plus 175 plus minus through 13 games with a new franchise, well ahead of Rasheed Wallace for the Pistons in 04 and Pau Gasol for the Lakers in 08, both of whom went on to make the NBA Finals. But without a healthy Julius Randle, the Knicks are going to have trouble getting to the finals themselves. Randle was just looking 100% again after having ankle surgery last June and dealing with lingering effects early in the season, but after dislocating his shoulder on a freak accident around the basket, Randle again being banged up is frustrating, but as we'll get to, now it's next man up time. Getting back to the Brunson criticism, and you can't deny the national television hating from Becky, Candace, and Stephen A swayed the all-star fan voting again against Jalen. For SAS, who's on ESPN nearly every day and claims to be a Knicks fan, he's shown his true colors by not just failing to properly promote Brunson, but also tearing him down. Reason this discourse is so damn frustrating for anyone who isn't a casual is that Jalen's always been efficient in the playoffs throughout his career, especially in a bigger role. Brunson, specifically as a first or second option in the postseason, has never failed to average at least 21 points on 46% shooting from the field in them. In the aftermath of the out of the blue from various talking heads hate, you have to love the fact that Brunson's taken his game to another level having dropped 30 plus points six times over his last seven showings. 
It's sad when any player who can chain in and out dribbles with consecutive momentum crossovers which lead into smitty moves and converted faders isn't getting love. But what if I told you there's been even more shade thrown at an always productive playoff weapon in Brunson that we haven't even looked at yet today? That's exactly the case, as Jalen Brunson isn't even in the top 15 on the official NBA website's MVP ladder. It's just insanely ignorant how merely the fact that he stands at an undersized NBA height of 6'1", leeways writers, analysts, and fans to view him as a non-capable championship number one option. For the Knicks collectively, dating back to the trade for OG, amidst winning 12 of 14, They've taken down Philadelphia and Denver by a combined 74 points, convincing wins over two top teams that you can't dismiss. Just a couple spots behind the reigning champion Nuggets who they just beat by 38, New York themselves posting what's the 10th greatest offensive rating of all time, on top of the fact that the orange and blue are tops in the association in defensive rating since the new year hit, has in the middle stages of the 82 game grind flaunted the composition of a playoff juggernaut. Whether it's the seeming to be thriving with a change of scenery Precious Achua, the having a career year former Golden State Warrior Dante DiVincenzo, the chemistry enhancing glue guy who does all the little things in Josh Hart, the team's 3 point percentage leader and backup point guard out of West Virginia Miles McBride, fan favorite centers who can protect the basket in Isaiah Hartenstein and Jericho Sims, or a young energy guy like Quentin Grimes who can get to the line, in your opinion, who has to step up the most in the absence of Randall? As always, I'm going to give the top answer down below in the comments section a shout out with whoever winning this Community Speaks shout out getting their name up on the Speaks board to compete for free merch of their choosing, top 2 Speaks winners receive a free shoe of their choosing, top 3 to 5 receive a free jersey of their choosing, with the winners being set by June 21st, so get your take in down below on the question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's shout out goes to Yaird who says, I do still trust the Clippers. This is some of the best basketball they've played in years. They would have lost that game against the Lakers last year with concentration lapses, but this year they actually know how to close out games. Also, awesome that you're giving Coffee some love. He was solid for us during the injury years and almost played nothing last year, but this year his numbers called again and he's been great. You already know the role players are giving credit on this channel, my guy. Appreciate that take and every other. DFlow signing off.